Hi, welcome all. You know, good day for all of you because I see different time zones people are sharing, you know, joining from. Some are in India, they say like in the evening. Some of them are from Scotland, it's like an afternoon. So we are different time zones. Thank you for taking your time to uh, join this webinar. Uh, I'm just going to give you like a quick introduction about um, Coco Town. I won't take too much time and then I will let Shadal talk about it. Yeah, Coco Town uh, was started, the parent company uh, was started in 1992. So we are, uh, the parent company is completed 30 years this year. And we started as a trading specialty food processing machines. Then later on, you know, when the recession hit, we wanted to change the new avenue. And we wanted to focus on three areas, you know, make sure that we don't leave a negative impact on the environment. We want to help customers' businesses and also help the farmers in the process. So we looked at all the opportunities and in 2009, we started to focus on chocolate making machines and, you know, that made uh, the bean to bar or the craft chocolate movement progress better. And this is like a quick timeline. And now, uh, you know, because of the our machines now, even cocoa farmers in origin countries can make chocolate. And they know they say usually coffee farmers they don't get taste coffee because it's too expensive but we changed it and the cocoa farmers they not only eat chocolate they make chocolate and they can uh, you know grow their income instead of selling uh, cocoa beans you know in commodity market so uh, with the covid happened and then or the shutdown so we wanted to change something so we came up with this empowering chocolate news webinar with the help of Teresa and the team and all of our contacts in the industry, they were gracious to donate their time and uh, energy and their knowledge to the community. And we hope uh, you learn from others and then we all flourish together. So we just want to uh, end always with Loka Samasta Sukhino Bhavantu. That means may all beings everywhere in the universe be happy and free and may thoughts words and actions of my own life contribute in some way to that happiness and to that freedom for all. Thank you. Now I will hand over to Teresa. Thank you, Mrs. Balu. Thank you. Okay. Welcome everyone. So I'm charged with doing a little bit of housekeeping. I just want you to let, want to let you know that you'll receive a link later to view the recording. As well, if you have any questions, uh, use that chat feature that we were using to introduce ourselves and put your questions in the chat. Um, I think that's it. Mrs. Balu, any other housekeeping? I think that's it. So what we'll do now is just a quick welcome to Shadel and a little bit of time to get to know you better. Uh, I'd like to ask you a question, maybe um, share with us a little bit about where your chocolate journey started or um, a highlight along the journey that you would like to share with us? Thank you very much, Teresa. Thank you, uh, Mrs. Balu, for having me here. It's um, really a great opportunity for Belmont Estate to be showcased here um, on this webinar. And I just want to really thank you also, Andal, for creating this forum for us as farmers and chocolate makers to spread our message, get the word out and, you know, to help each of us with our marketing. So Teresa, your question, my chocolate journey. Wow. Um, so this really started many years ago with Coco. I am a third generation owner of Belmont Estate. It belonged to my grandparents and it was, um, you know, passed on to me. But Coco on Belmont Estate started since the 1700s. It's been a very long journey to where we are now. And um, for many years, we've been producing cocoa and selling. And uh, the, the chocolate part of the journey be began in 2003 when we started collaborating with Mott Green of the Grenada Chocolate Company. He was about to launch chocolate in Grenada and to start this tree to bar movement in the world. 
And he approached us because we were neighbors. Our farm was just adjacent to his chocolate company. He approached us for beans and he wanted to have organic beans. So we started our organic journey together. And I really credit him with introducing us to the, um, the value and the importance of organic and sustainability. And so we started, we got certified and we started supplying the Grenada Chocolate Company with beans. And we did that for several years until more farmers were, you know, um, came on board as his operations got bigger. So that's how the, you know, the journey for chocolate started. Years later, other chocolate companies started in Grenada, like um, the Juve chocolate and Kim Russell started making chocolate and uh, there were other chocolate makers who, who other persons who got interested in the business. And for us, we thought it was a good time, which was around 2016 actually, um, that we ourselves get into chocolate making. We'd been just producing beans for so many years. We had great quality beans and we wanted to present a chocolate that represented Belmont Estate more to incorporate spices and fruits and other of the produce from the estate into our chocolate to, you know, take control of the entire process from the, you know, from the field to fermentation and drying to making a finished bar. And so we decided to get into it. Really, it was very, we were not quite ready, but we were approached by a chocolate maker from the UK who wrote, his name was Jay Kang. He just wrote and said, listen, I'm a chocolate maker. I live in London. I've never been on a cocoa farm. I'd like to experience what growing cocoa is all about and processing cocoa. So can I come and visit the farm? And, you know, we're always open to having people to come and learn and people to learn from. So of course I said, yes, certainly come on down. And he did came had the time of his life you know really fell in love with Grenada and the cocoa farms and the farmers and we formed a bond and I did tell him of our dream of getting into chocolate making he went back to London a couple months later wrote and said listen I'm ready to help you fulfill your dream and so he came back the same year and uh, later in the year that was around November and by May of the next year we had uh, our factory up and running and ready to participate in our chocolate festival at the time. So, you know, that's how it started. <laughs> and so it's been a five year journey of chocolate, but many, many years of, you know, of cocoa production. And it's been very exciting. And of course, you'll hear more about it <laughs> um, during my presentation. So that was a long introduction. <laughs> It was wonderful. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much. It was wonderful. Very inspiring. I got goosebumps and, and I love here. I love hearing, you know, the, the seed, the seed planted to, to the dream coming to fruition. So thank you for sharing that. Well, thank with you. that, I'm going to turn the presentation over to you and I'm very excited to hear and see more. Thank you, Teresa. So I think it's a good introduction would be to show that little video. We've just done this video on our chocolate production and be something nice to um, to show what we do and uh, to introduce you to some of our staff and to see what Belmont Estate looks like for those of you who haven't been there. How about now? Great, great. Making chocolate at Belmont Estate is a labor of love. It allows us not only to connect with our people and the land, but also to share our history, our values, and our passion with others. Our cocoa beans are organically farmed, naturally fermented, carefully sun-dried, and produced in small batches to ensure that the end product is a luxurious, high quality chocolate infused with love, nature, history, passion, purpose, and the rich flavors and nuances that only fine flavored Grenadian cocoa gives. I invite you to join us to share this wonderful experience with us.
Grenada is one of eight countries in the world that produces 100% fine flavored cocoa. Team, thank you, great day. Thanks a lot, see you tomorrow. Exactly. And what you're doing is turning it over, exposing it to air and sunshine, <laughs> speeding up the drying process. Nice massage, yeah? Oh, great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. At every stage in this process, we sort our beans to make sure that we only have perfect beans. Yvonne and I are removing foreign matter, irregular beans, to make sure we have the best quality beans to make perfect chocolate. We are doing a cut test on every bean so that we can tell whether the cocoa is properly fermented or dried. Right, so looking at the batch, we can safely say that the cocoa beans are well fermented. at a particular temperature. Um, once we get up to that temperature, because we want to make sure we have that nice temperature where we can guarantee that we have the right flavors going on in the beans, um, we crack the beans and remove the shells. Welcome to our aging room. We age our chocolate for three months. Aging chocolate is like aging fine wine or cheese. Aging brings out the complex, flavorful notes in our chocolate. that you can visit us to enjoy the best that Grenada has to offer. But if you can't be here soon, you can still enjoy and experience Belmont Estate through our healthy, delicious, organic chocolates that we have handcrafted with love just for you. Good, thank, thank you very much. Thank you for sharing, Teresa. Okay, so I'm gonna go into my presentation. And the present, my presentation today is called Spicing Up Your Cocoa Farm. And I'd just like to share that with you now. Excuse me. Good, so spicing up our, your cocoa farm. And when, we, when I talk about spicing up our cocoa farm here, yes, literally I am talking about spices because Grenada is known as the spice isle of the Caribbean. 
And we, um, historically, we have been known for being one of the world's largest pr producer of nutmegs. Uh, we have fallen down over the years, um, mostly because of the hurricane that we had in 2004 that caused us to lose a lot of our nutmeg crop and uh, we have not been able to get back to our production levels, but we do have a variety of spices and we're very proud to offer spices to the world. And so the name, you know, Pure Grenada, the spice of the Caribbean. So yes, it's about spices and cocoa, but when I think of spicing up my cocoa farm, I'm also looking at diversifying the farm, right? So we have been able to diversify our farm over the years to include other activities and products besides cocoa. So now we are able to, um, you know, have other products like you know, other um, confections and pickles and sauces and jams and jellies. We're able to offer tours and, you know, invite guests to come onto the estate. We, we have also a small go dairy operation. So spicing up in terms of diversification of the, your farm is also important. But I'm also looking at spices in spicing up in terms of agritourism. So uh, I did mention to you, well, this farm has been in our family since 1944, and we have just been farming until 2002 when we diversified into agritourism. So I'm going to be looking at these kinds of ways of spicing up your farm, and I hope that they would be helpful to you. So um, I'm hoping, too, that from my presentation, that you would have some inspiration and some ideas so that you, too, can continue to spice up your business. Um, business has been very challenging for us, I think for all of us in this business um, since COVID. And even um, you know, with economic downturns in the world, our industry ha has been severely affected. So what can we do better? How can we, um, we scale up? How can we pivot so that we can uh, continue to be successful, and not only for ourselves, but success means also helping others, helping other entrepreneurs, helping our staff, so that their lives could be more successful, and that we can make a positive impact on our community, our countries, and of course, on the world. So the areas that I'm going to cover would be an overview of Grenada and Belmont Estate, um, our cocoa and chocolate story, spices and chocolate, spices and tourism, cocoa that gives back, chocolate that gives back, and how we're sharing our story and our products with the world. Many of you have had the the um, wonderful opportunity to visit us here in Grenada. And for those of you who haven't, please do visit sometime. It is really a gem in the Caribbean. It is a beautiful, beautiful island. It has historically been known for sun, sea, and sand, but luckily um, we have been able to showcase so much more. Uh, of course, as I told you before, Grenada is known for its spices, nutmeg, mace, ginger, turmeric, uh, cinnamon, um, many, many spices, but, and we're, we have been known for cocoa, but now we're known for chocolate as well. And I think that's really very, very special. We have about six chocolate companies, chocolate makers on the island and growing. And it's really an exciting new niche area for us. And it gives us an opportunity to really to explore and experiment with that fantastic cocoa that we have here on the island. We're also really excited because Grenada has been called, it's been named the first culinary capital of the world by the World Food Travel Association, and that happened uh, last year. And I have a quote here, it says, the integration of spices into Grenada's cuisine has resulted in an overall robust and flavor flavorful national food profile, and the customs of food preparation are passed on by way of festivals, cultural events, and family gatherings, which feature traditional dishes. So you see that cuisine is big here, and it's one of the product offerings we have here at, in Grenada. But 
there's a lot more to see. There's a lot of culture and heritage, um, lots of water. So we have uh, beautiful lakes and waterfalls. It's a country that um, is very um, rich in its topography and um, in its forestry. It's great for hiking, for honeymooning, for, for diving, for, for snorkeling, and um, just everything in between. <laughs> so if you're looking for an experience that is really culturally rich and uh, you love the outdoors and uh, uh, to enjoy nature, Grenada is really one of the most beautiful places to visit. We also have the benefit of some islands called the Grenadines, and it's great for sailing. We have a lovely archipelago between Grenada, the north of Grenada and the St. Vincent that offers great sailing and um, fishing. So please put it on your bucket list to visit. So as I said in the video, it's one of eight countries in the world that has 100% fine flavor cocoa, and that we are very, very proud of. And um, this lady on the left here is actually, her name is Yvette Noel Schur. She is Beyonce's publicist and she happens to be Grenadian. And she um, has done a lot of publicity for Grenada. She loves our cocoa and chocolate. And so she helps to promote that to the world. So some of the things that we offer at Belmont Estate. Uh, as I mentioned, it's an old farm. So uh, there's a lot of history and heritage here. And we try to, to showcase our heritage in, in our messaging. Uh, our Indian heritage is important for us because my grandparents were descendants of Indian immigrants who came after slavery to um, be part of the, um, the labor force. They came as indentured workers. So we celebrate our Indian heritage as, as well as our African heritage. But um, particularly at Belmont Estate, we are very involved in the Indo community. We, we, we have a heritage event every year called the uh, with the indo grenadian Heritage Foundation called Indian Arrival Day, where we, um, we celebrate uh, the arrival of Indians to Grenada, and we try to keep our local, you know, Indo-Grenadian heritage alive. So, um, some of the other items that we offer are, of course, the organic farm is available for tours. We do have a goat dairy where we, with a small goat farm, that uh, we use our milk for making a fine quality goat's cheese that is only available on the island. The tree to bar chocolate making, local cuisine at our restaurant, um, lots of experiences for learning. We do take interns on board, interns both locally and internationally who come to work mostly in the areas of sustainable development, uh, sustainable agriculture and tourism. And we are big on service. Uh, we, lo we love serving our people with a smile and uh, we take time to train our staff well and to ensure that we offer good quality in our experiences and our products at Belmont Estate. So here are some of the, the um, activities. Um, these are cocoa centered activities where we offer our guests an opportunity to walk through the cocoa like we still do for cocoa drying. And at the top, our dancing of the cocoa, the traditional way of polishing cocoa at um, here in Grenada. So, excuse me, we see Belmont Estate as a um, as an example of our commitments to, to transformation. You know, um, many times people are concerned that, you know, this is a plantation with a really terrible past, but we recognize that this is part of our history. And, uh, you know, we are happy now that we have the opportunity to transform it and to make it into something pleasant and positive and beautiful that shares our history, but also offers, offers an opportunity for us to have a livelihood, to create extraordinary products and to share with people what our lives are like. Uh, it also gives us an opportunity to make an impact in the community, not only by offering jobs, but by um, offering opportunities for education and also for our nonprofit to be involved in, in helping people. And we'll talk a little bit more about that and also in preserving the environment and encouraging our people to do that. 
So um, a little bit more about our cocoa and uh, chocolate experience. So I think I, I spoke quite a bit about it um, earlier and you've seen the video, but just to, to say that of course, cocoa is a colonial crop. Um, it, has, it was introduced here in Grenada in the 1700s as a, um, a complement to sugarcane and later a substitute. Unfortunately, Grenada grows um, Grenada got out of the sugar business. We are still in the rum business. And um, in recent times, we have seen a resurgence in planting of sugarcane. But for many, many years, sugarcane was not um, extensively planted on the island. So um, it came in in the 1700s and uh, um, our soil here in Grenada and the climatic conditions were really good for cocoa to flourish and so cocoa did very well here. The variety that we have is the Trinitario variety and um, sub varieties are the international cocoa selection and the Grenada selection. So cocoa is grown mostly um, as an agroforestry crop with other crops like spices. You would see cocoa and nutmegs growing together in most plantations but grown with other spices as well and with fruit, with breadfruit, um, with other flora um, as well. Uh, we grow, we harvest cocoa year round, but our peak season is between November and April. And we're happy to say that our crop is looking good for this year. And we're looking forward to a robust um, cocoa crop. At Belmont Estate, we're really proud that we entered the the Cocoa of Excellence, the International Cocoa Awards in 2019, and we were named um, one of the best 50 samples. And uh, here's a quote <laughs> from me. Um, and I talk about the fact that cocoa is in my DNA because it has been in my family business for 75 years now. And it's a really very, very important part of my life and the life of my staff. I think um, we're all very proud that we're able to produce such good quality cocoa and that we're in a community now um, of other farmers and chocolate makers who are so um, encouraging and supporting and that we learn so much from. And, you know, we were really happy that we had an opportunity to participate in Cocoa of Excellence because it gave us an opportunity to showcase Grenada's Cocoa more. And uh, we were able to attend the salon that year thanks to um, the support of Andal and Cocoa Town. And actually we shared a booth with them in uh, 2019. So, I mean, I won't go through the details of production. You saw that in the video, and I think most of you are familiar with it, but just some photos of what um, we look like. We still use our traditional drying trays or drying cocoa directly out in the sun. We love to display to our guests. And when we tell our story, give them an opportunity to, to participate and to walk the cocoa themselves and to get a feel for you know, what um, doing this work is like. And, um, you know, some this is a shot of our, our factory. So a little bit about our, our chocolate profile that came from Cocoa of Excellence. It says mild chocolate, dried fruit and faint floral flowers aroma, smooth chocolate flavor emerging initially blended with floral flower notes, balanced date, browned fruit character, mid taste with fresh fruit and a hint of tropical fruit. The late taste of roasted nut and chocolate lasting into the aftertaste. And um, the, the um, flavor profile that we received as well. So as I mentioned um, earlier, spices is really a very important part of um, our production in Grenada and at Belmont Estate. And uh, in Grenada, nutmeg, uh, was our, and still is our number one uh, produce that we um, we grow on the island. Uh, I think the main 
agricultural produce would be uh, nutmegs, cocoa, and also soursop. Grenada exports soursop to the United States. And uh, after Hurricane Ivan in, 20, in 2004, it was introduced as um, another economic crop for our farmers. So just to give you an idea of numbers, so pre-Hurricane Ivan in 2004, um, Grenada's production of nutmegs were um, 2 million kgs. And in 2021, um, our production was 802,000. Cocoa, on the other hand, in, 20, in 2004, before the hurricane, was 700, well, 800,000 um, kgs. And um, we have maintained um, or, or risen back to that level. We're at about 770,000 kgs. And the reason is that um, the nut nutmeg trees, as you know, are very, very tall. And uh, the root system um, was not as deep as cocoa. And so we lost a lot more nutmegs than we did you know, cocoa. And cocoa has been very resilient and has bounced back quite well. Um, unfortunately, not so with um, nutmegs. So we were actually number two in the world for nutmeg production after Indonesia. But now some other countries are creeping in there and um, we have been we have not been able to return to that level, but our focus has been on producing quality um, and because we are a small niche market and uh, quality is the way we intend to differentiate ourselves. So um, as I mentioned earlier, um, getting into the chocolate business was important for us to be able to create our own identity with chocolate and uh, we have been able to craft that for ourselves we presently do dark milk and uh, white chocolates and uh, we've been able to use spices to integrate into our chocolates so that um, we can showcase our spices as well so for instance um, this here is a lemongrass chocolate and it's used by um, with lemongrass that is grown on the estate. It's a white 45%. And um, it's really, it's, it's a big hit um, in Grenada, this lemongrass chocolate. Another one that is very popular is a um, chocolate that we call oil down. So oil down is our national dish. And it is... Um, it is a big one pot stew of many ground provisions and other provisions like with the main ingredient being breadfruit. So this is cooked as a, um, a big family meal or it is cooked um, when friends get together. Um, it is cooked a lot during um, our independence celebration. And it's just one of the favorite um, meals on the island. It's, as I said, it's our national dish and we showcase it a lot to our tourists when they come here. So breadfruit is the core ingredient and we add any vegetable to that and ground provisions like potatoes mm -hmm. and yams and, and dasheen and so on. And we build that up with vegetables and we add coconut milk and turmeric. So turmeric gives this pot a very yet distinctive yellow color mm -hmm. and that's what we've tried to replicate in the chocolate again it's um it is a 45 percent white chocolate with coconut milk and turmeric and ginger and it is a really big hit so we we launched it last year for independence celebration, and we've been able to maintain it through the year as a, a regular bar. Um, but in our dark line, we also do a, a dark spice with uh, cinnamon and ginger. And one of our initial bars was called Pure Grenada. So our, our um, Grenada branding is Pure Grenada, the Isle of the, sorry, mm -hmm. Pure Grenada, the spice of the Caribbean. So we have use that name and we in that bar which is a 60 percent milk bar we have incorporated four spices nutmeg mace cinnamon and ginger as a classic um, showcase of what grenada chocolate could be with using our spices 
So um, we, we will continue to showcase our spices in our chocolate. Um, we believe, you know, you know, that's who Grenada is. And at Belmonte State Spices are so much a huge part of our product offerings. And uh, so we intend to do more with spices and chocolate and also in our confection line as well to, you know, to showcase our spices more in our ganaches and um, with our bonbons. So cocoa spices and tourism. So people come to Grenada a lot because of our cocoa and chocolate now, and because of our spices. One of the biggest hits that Grenada offers is our chocolate festival that is that um, happens in May of every year. And I think this year is coming up to our 10th year anniversary. So if you haven't been, I'm inviting you to come and join us for chocolate festival where you get to showcase and try everything related to cocoa and chocolate. And it's not just a farm and chocolate tasting event. Um, you know, there are chocolate and cocoa um, centered cruises, you know, there's fashion, you know, there are opportunities to get involved in community activities. And um, of course, there are opportunities for you to trade as well, to get access to some of our great beans or our couverture and or to develop relationship with our farmers and chocolate makers. So hope that we can see you sometime. So some of uh, Belmont Estate, as I mentioned, has been developed as an agritourism product. And we have a lot of experiences for op opportunities for people to come and engage. Uh, it's a very immersive place and we cater for all ages. We, besides the 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 entire tree to bar chocolate experience there are other tours that we offer so you can go hiking and um you know just explore the the topography and the different um gardens on the estate there are opportunities to just have a full farm tour where you can visit the various gardens. You can get involved in some form of planting or harvesting, of course, sampling of the various um, produce that we have on the estate and just hanging out with our, our staff. Um, some of the experiences that, um, these are mostly cocoa experiences here. We do have, um, farm tours that we offer for children. We uh, we offer a birding experience. Yeah, so here are just some of the experiences that you have. We do have some, you know, we have cultural opportunities. I think many of these are from our chocolate festival. And, um, you know, we enjoy just having this opportunity to showcase Belmont Estate to our guests. So, um, we see the, our business as an opportunity to give back and our chocolate as an opportunity to give back. So we do have a philanthropic arm of our business that is called the Belmont Foundation. And the Belmont Foundation is de devoted to community development, education, and self-empowerment of our local people. There's a strong focus on students. So we offer a variety of scholarships for students who are in high school or in um, at TAM CC, which is our local college. So it could be um, scholarships for transportation and uh, tuition and um, um, books and uh, and so on. And we're happy that we've been able to assist several students to get through their high school or their um, their college experience. Aside from that, um, the, the elderly is a big focus of our foundation as well. There are many people who are living alone or who may not have family members to give them the care that they need. So we do offer support with um, distributing meals within the community once per week. We have stopped that program um, we stopped the program during COVID, but we're getting ready next year to reestablish it um, because of contact with the old people, with the elderly, sorry, we, we had to put the program on hold, but we offered a hot meal for over 10 years to, to the elderly who lived at home. We were only able to do it once a week, but um, we did 
offer you know other assistance like persons who needed help with having their homes um, cleaned or um, attention to their personal selves or you know um, it could have been assistance to get to the doctor or with medication things like that we did hamper distributions at at um, Christmas time or just food distributions when you know when necessary to the elderly um, aside from that we would you know host camps for for kids um we had residential camps and day camps during the summertime and activities like that so that our young people can have more opportunities to develop themselves and to prepare themselves for you know for life um, we also have been you know very involved in in uh, environmental causes we collaborated with, or we still collaborate, excuse me, with a nonprofit here called SPECTO, and they're involved in environmental conservation and particularly uh, in the north of the island, and also with working working with our leatherback turtles to ensure their, uh, their protection. So we've done many initiatives with them, mostly um, educating our people, in caring for the environment, caring for our waterways like our river, because a river runs through the, the um, estate, in doing cleanups for rivers or in the village or um, on, the, on, the, on the coast. So these are some of the ways that we give back. Of course, um, we give back to our staff, trying to take care of them the best way we can and to help them to improve their lives. So um, sharing our story, this is an opportunity for us to share our story and we are very grateful for it. Um, we're gonna be at Salon de Chocolat this year and it's another opportunity for us to share our story and get our products out there. And so we're grateful for that as well. We have had an opportunity to um, be sponsored, partly sponsored by the ITC and we really look forward to being in Paris this year. But um, as I have said in the slide, the pandemic took a great toll on our business and um, it made us realize how tourism dependent our business was. And as much as we were diversified, our main market was to tourists. And uh, we were not, um, we had not expanded our business enough on the outside in terms of exporting. And so, the pandemic gave us uh, an opportunity to, to pivot and to refocus. So now we have been able to uh, set up an online store and we are offering our products on our online store to the US market mostly. So we're looking at also doing the same thing in Europe, most probably in the UK. Um, but we're our main focus for now is our U.S. market and trying to establish um, contacts, B2B contacts in the U.S. market, and of course to, to really vamp up on our online sales. During the pandemic, we started a little initiative called My Grenada Box because um, we hardly had tourists on the island, and the island was so affected by the pandemic. We took the opportunity to could to collaborate with other producers here and small businesses on the island to offer a box of Grenada products to the US market. So um, it went off very successfully in 2002 and uh, we did it again in 2021, excuse me, it went off successfully in 2020 and we did it again in 2021 and we plan to do it again this year. But we have, also just establish the site as a Grenada marketplace so that we can share Grenadian products um, with the world. Of course, one of the challenges that we have had um, is that ensuring that products were fit for the, for the US market. And um, FDA requirement for most of these food products is that there are nutritional facts on the labeling. And many of our producers did not comply. So we have had issues with that. And so we're trying to help persons in their nutritional facts journey. Um, it's, a, it's a slow process getting it here. We have 
recently had to resort to getting nutritional facts from from India. And um, so we're also dealing with that challenge to ensure that our producers here can be well equipped and um, for the US market. So um, these are our online stores. The Belmont Estate Organics is a store that sells our Belmont Estate products. Presently, we do not have chocolate on the site yet. Getting out of, of summer, we wanted to wait until the, um, the weather was more conducive to shipping chocolate out. Our, we have a fulfillment center and uh, that we use that is located in Florida where it's warm as well. So <laughs> we do have, we are working around those little challenges for, for our shop. And we have the Micronator Box shop. And recently we also started a shop, an online shop here in Grenada that we are about to launch with our new website. So our new website is um, belmontestategrenada.com. It should be launched in the next two weeks or so. It will definitely be launched before we go to, to France. And um, so you'll be able to get caught up on what we're doing see our new product line and visit our online stores. So um, this, is, um, this is what our new packaging looks like for our chocolate. And these are some of the other products that we offer, our, some of the teas, sour sub tea and bay leaf tea. And um, we offer a host of spices on our website as well. So I hope that uh, this has given you a good insight into our story and uh, into our journey and that it gives you some motivation also for you and for your business. This is, it has been a very exciting journey and it, it is a labor of love. You have to love your people and you have to love what you do um, because that's when the satisfaction comes in when you enjoy it and what you do is making a difference for the lives of others. It is bringing joy to people's lives. I think um, one of the greatest joys for me is to, to see the enthusiasm of my staff, of my team, as they work to prepare products for others to, to, to use and to enjoy. And also to see the responses from our guests when they visit and they hear our story or when they interact with our people or taste our products. So I hope that you will have the same kind of um, fulfillment from what you do, but that the business is going to generate the returns, the financial returns that is required for your business to survive and for you to really make a positive impact on the lives of others. Thank you. Thank you very much for this opportunity to present and thank you very much to Coco Town. We use Coco Town so much in our production and we're really happy for the uh, for the relationship that we share with um, Dr. Balu and Mrs. Balu because they have been really a powerhouse of support for us. Um, the not just being able to use machines that work um, so efficiently um, and getting the support that we need, but also um, they have really helped us to join the community of um, cocoa producers and chocolate makers worldwide. And that has given us um, a lot more um, enthusiasm and more support and recognition. And for that, we thank you.